I basically call myself a cricket breeder now, you know. These guys, man, always watching me. Nosy Parker's these two. Yep, always watching what I'm doing, always wanting to know. Mm. So he's hungry. So I'm going to go try catch some flies for you guys and show you how I can hand feed these northern green geckos. He's like, come on, man. I'm waiting for my flies, yo. Hurry up. Okay, so I've got some two juicy flies. And two is just in case. I want to show you guys one. If the other one, one fails, I've got the other one as a backup. So it's pretty gross holding the fly, but for the sake of this video, I'll do it. Oh, sometimes they don't know what I'm doing and they get a bit sketchy, but it's okay. Yeah, if, that, if one doesn't want it, I'll just find another gecko that wants it, basically. So one's like real skittish in regards to they think I'm like intruding, but I'm not. Let's see what he does. Here we go. He knows. Yep, see? Here we go. He's never going to refuse a meal and he's off. The other one's just being a bit silly. He's like, nah, man. Too bad he's not facing us, but that's it. They're voracious eaters. If they know they're getting a meal, they're going to they're gonna come to my hand. It's quite cool. All right, guys, now we're gonna do some close proximity feeding. So, here's the gecko. See, he's got his, so he's got his legs. He's got his legs. Now the gecko just needs to maneuver it into his mouth. He's like, I'm not letting go, man. This is, we're there. Yeah, there we go, he's got him. That's it, he's done. That blowfly is done. This is the closest you'll ever get to a northern green gecko eating a fly. Incredible animals, incredible species of gecko. They live in the North Island of New Zealand, the north of the North Island. Incredibly hardy animals. What are you gonna say? He's a fucking mess. He's, this thing is fucking grubby. Put the sunnies on. Oh, these are a team of six bucks. Not bad. I'm real shit with sunnies, so I can't really buy myself good sunnies. Those days are over. This thing fucking stinks. So this is the old tree frog terrarium. I need to clean it out. I need to move some stuff around. That is gross. Easiest way to do it? Something like this. Oh man. All right, this thing needs to be closer. Previous episode, I was saying I was downsizing my tree frogs. Nothing has changed. I know I'm just oh, cleaning out one of the old terrariums and I'm just gonna leave it empty because I'm planning to move in the next six months. So I need to kind of get everything ready to move. And the easiest way to do that is less full terrariums. The empty ones are easy. Deal with. The empty ones are easy to deal with or manage. This is gross, man. Here, what a green bin. Probably the best thing. Oh, I kind of want to keep the clay balls. Oh, they're just kind of gross as well. I might just have to start fresh, man. Clean slate, you know. I'll have to have baby geckos in this in the future if they breed. That is, it'll be like a nursery essentially in the future for any. I mean, I've got a gravid female forest gecko, so autumn problem next year. Autumn slash beginning of winter. It's usually when they. First, I will see. This is fucking disgusting. Ooh, yo, hey, I'm frogs, man. The hardest thing to do is I'm gonna have to take it into like a corner to wash it. Oh, there, though, it's nice. I was kind of like, it was cold this morning, that's why I've got pants on. And then I'm like, well, I'll just take my t shirt off and not put shorts on. So it's best of both worlds. Start tanning that upper, upper body, man. You know what I mean? Summer's just around the corner. That's the thing with frogs, eh? The grubs. I mean, like, you can have. You can definitely have cleaner environments, but like, you know, a filtered environment. I just didn't filter this and this became basically like a pond. What am I doing with the rest? I'll probably, yeah, I can't. There's no way I can save these black tables. That's not happening. You know what I need? I need, I need a fucking wheelbarrow, man. Um, all right, I need to move this to... See, you know what I just did? Fuck. Oh, well, one less thing to fucking take to the next house, I suppose. Fuck. Those things are not cheap in this country. Right, so you know what I'm going to do now? I have to transfer this guy over to the next one over. I suppose I've just saved myself some rubbish and recycling. In regards to that tank, can just go in the scrap. Can't be fucked finding a lid for it. Oh, sorry, a front for it. Because that's hard enough to do on its own. Because those, like, sizes... The reason why I got that one is because those 600 by 600 by 600... Uh, they're, they're hard to find these things, man. You can't get them in pet stores. You can order them online, I think. But even then, hard to find. The sucker's going over there, right? I'm gonna move some things around. This is first, gotta get that water out. Get the light off. Oh, you can see one here, he's on the land. That makes it a lot it's really, really easy. Here's your mic. He's in good, man. I'll get the other one always hides, he's the hardest to find. I'll get him in a sec. Look at him, it's Ferg. By the way, you'll probably think this is disgusting, but hey, I'm old school. So, boom, that goes in there. I've got enough. Bend down the bottom. Yeah, boy. Works like a charm every time. And I'm only doing this so I can get the water down so it's a little bit lighter to transfer over. I'm not going to move any of the rocks. 
I'm a strong lad. It's either going to be a fucking disaster or it's going to work a treat. So it's just going to go in here. So I need to get the light ready, turn the light off. I need to get the glass lit off. Where is my, there it is. Okay, so how strong am I feeling? Oh, let's clean our area. You know, keep your workstations clean. It's a bit of height as well. I'll be able to like access it more. Got plans for it anyway to extend the solidarium. And I want to take this with me. This is a good option. So I've unplugged that. Yeah, we're good to go. All right. How here is this thing? Okay, I can do it. Yeah, this power coming through paying off. Oh, boy. <laughs> that wasn't close at all. I was fine. Okay, so I'm going to actually give it a clean while I'm here, just to scrub it up, dub hands in the tub. Um, I love the style though, and look at that, look at that jungle man, honestly, whew, that's free range, that is free range. Just thinking, do I want to, nah, yeah, actually, um, just because it should be alright. So I've got this towel that I can use, I gave it a scrub during the week, so I don't want to, I'll start with like, clean slate, if you know what I mean. Oh man, I'll tell you one thing for free, man. What if things are grubby, man? Actually, while I'm here, I might extend out that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Two birds, one stone. I'm actually going to extend out that paludarium uh, now. And we'll see. We're going to do like a little time lapse of, not time lapse, but we're going to see how long it takes to get that. That's basically across the whole wall. That's going to be epic, man. All right, let's do that. So I've got this. My fern moss, my normal location. Now, I don't need to add too much because the water level is only going to go to there. And also, the idea for this is I actually want to see how much this grows scratch so i just need to make sure it goes out all along the back and just fills in the cracks now you'll think i'm crazy this is just mo like fern moss just grows in the garden you know um so i was like okay well if this grew so well why don't i just replicate the same thing a little experiment. good little experiment make sure you get all the roots out that you don't need fill in those cracks and crevices now there's grass in there but it's all good i can just pick the grass out like I'll pull that out because it's it's getting a bit out of hand. It's often you don't need to plant it into any soil. Let's pull some of this long stuff out. Now I'm not gonna pull it out. I'm gonna actually trim it with these little aquascaping scissors because I'm gonna pull out any of the good stuff. Because you know, like you gotta maintain it, otherwise it just gets I mean it looks cool how bushy it is, but it also is getting out of kind of need to keep it like a haircut, right? It's just looking smart, not too crazy. Some people like jungles. I mean the newt was loving the jungle. I mean it's still a jungle, but slightly maintained. Let's start filling that sucker up. I live in a city where we get really, really good water out of the ground. It should be fine. This is what I always use, essentially. It's not going to be any different, but I'll let it settle for a bit before I put them back in there. I want it probably about like at least six inches. At least six inches. I can see to what rock I need to go to. And believe it or not, there is a waterfall in here. A the water, waterfall pump, but you never see it. Because it's so overgrown. Maybe I need one on the other side. Yep. You know what this is? This is like a day in the life. With this is the other reason why I can't wait for my future space or reptile room. It's just a fucking nightmare having everything all over the place, man. I just want a bit more uniformity and structure with my enclosure. Let's get old Nutus back in there. Actually, I might add the other pump, man. Why not? Hey, the right now looks pretty epic, but let's get Ferg back in. Now, I normally use gloves, but I'm in a rush, so I'll just get him out of my hand and go wash the shit out of my hands. Bloop. All right, enjoy. Okay, so you know what I have to do today? I have to separate my baby crickets, basically, because I've got these big guys that are getting super big because I've obviously had staggered egg laying. And I've kind of got like the tiny pinheads with the bigger ones, so I kind of have to separate them. And I also want to show the different life cycles, which will be good to see. So I have to be careful with some of these. That's the thing, man. I'm, it's all getting out of hand. Got too much going on now with these crickets. I'll put the lid on this one so that none escape while I'm kind of moving them around. So yeah. I don't know. It's not easy. Oh, yep. Some in there. So I'll put a lid on that one just to keep them in there for now. Yeah, and I'll show you them in a sec. The size difference. But see, why is that one? Oh, I see they're shitting. They're shitting. I was like, why is that one dead? He's not dead. Oh, wow. Size difference is quite different. All right, here we go. That's one. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. Here's a big chunky one. And doing this with my fingers, man, as well. Like, I don't want to crush them, but I do need to separate them because the big ones are going to eat the smaller ones. And to be fair, the ones I'm getting out now, I will feed out, which is the good thing, I suppose. They will become feeders. And then the generations to come that are still hatching will become my future breeders, so to speak. Even though you would think, you know, I should do it in reverse where these older ones are my future breeders. And then I keep my, I can't even see, man. And then I keep my uh, pinheads as feeders, the ones coming through now. But I'm like, nah, well, maybe that is the way to go. I don't know. You tell me. Who are the experienced cricket breeders out there? They can tell me what's the best way to do it. I personally don't think there's a wrong or right way, but it could be just me. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Where are you, big boys? Oh, there we go. Yeah, some of them are big, man. That guy's a, 
That guy's first generation. Oh, man, you can tell who these first generations are. They're these bulky, bulky breeders, man. Bulky. Bulkin. Look at some size on them, man. Where's my torch? There it is. I need a torch because in the black, they're in like a black bin, so they're hard to spot initially. Crickets are hard, man. God. All right, there's another one. Successful. What I will do at some point, I will get out like 25. Or maybe I'll do 50 this time because 50 crickets will give me 2x what I got now. But yeah, look at them all, man. They're running around, little cutie pies. And that's the thing with my cricket experience is that I've bred them, and now I feel bad. These guys are going to be feeders. But they're only going to be feeders to my leopard geckos, because you know what? Frogs eating flies. Uh, so these guys will mainly be for the leopard geckos, I think. They will be good to have when I finally have baby native geckos, whenever that happens. Hopefully uh, autumn slash winter. But for now, these guys are doing just fine for the leopard geckos. It also means I can keep more of the stock, because I'll only need to feed out, like, I've got three leopard geckos, so I'll give them, like, Maybe like two, three crickets each every second or third day. You know, cricket gecko, uh, cricket geckos, leopard geckos are mostly insectivores, so they will probably need these guys more than my other animals. My skinks are omnivores. Native geckos, flies are easier for the enclosure because they're arboreal, they're in tall enclosures. Crickets are um, crickets are terrestrial. They're not the greatest feeding for them in those enclosures. Oh man, there's a lot more guys than I thought. Than I first thought. Stay tuned for the next one.